Pastor, I genuinely feel that I am pretty comfortable keeping kosher here and, and being a student here. Um, but that being said, there are a number of barriers, there are a number of issues that uh, individual Jewish students face and that you know the community as a whole face. So the two issues that I guess I ha didn't have to face personally, um, the first one being that Jewish students don't come here. I'm here, so that isn't one that I guess I had to deal with. But people look at McMaster and they go, well, this isn't a place where I can be comfortable because there aren't that many kosher options on campus. Um, I know many people, my friends from high school who said that. Um, I don't think it's fully true, but I definitely think there is some, there is some validity to that. And that's something which, you know, it makes me sad. And I, I don't want McMaster to be seen as that type of place because in reality, it's, it's not. It's very accepting and there are a lot of options. But definitely, McMaster is not really seen as a place where a kosher observing person uh, is, you know, really going to look at and say, this is where I'd like to go. Um, another thing that I've heard which was really disturbing to me, because I didn't even know this was happening until very recently, is I've heard people who came up to me and they said, you know, you know, you keep kosher, like, you know, maybe you can organize a Shabbat meal for me. And I'm like, sure, I didn't even know that that was something you were interested in. They, they, they'll tell me, yeah, I mean, when I was at home, when I, you know, growing up, I always kept kosher. But when I came here, I felt like I had to basically choose. Am I going to be a normal student or am I going to keep kosher? And I chose, you know, to be a normal student. I didn't feel like I could live on residence keeping kosher. I didn't feel like I could interact with people keeping kosher. I mean, that, that really pained me because I had no idea that there are people who are basically giving up a part of their identity so that they can be, you know, a comfortable student here. And, and I, I didn't know that even existed. Um, but uh, the fact that that does is, is, I guess, a little disturbing. Um, another thing that I guess really happens, and this happened to me, um, which I didn't even really notice um, until sort of, you know, I got into upper years in my program, is that food is such a central thing that can just bring people together. I'm in the arts and science program. It's a great program. Um, and one of the really great things about the program is that the people in the program are really close. There's a really uh, big sense of community. But one, I don't really feel as part of the community as a lot of people um, in my program. And one of the things that I guess looking back on when I reflect and that I think might have been a part of that is because, you know, let's say we had our, one of our classes together. We all had calculus. And after calculus, everyone was like, all right, well, it's 12.30. Let's, let's go grab a bite to eat. Let's go talk about class. Let's go just talk about life. And I would just go home to eat, or I would go somewhere else to eat because I couldn't eat with all of my classmates. And food really is something that everybody needs and can bring everyone together. And the fact that I guess I didn't really have that experience and the fact that a lot of people can have that experience to be, you know, feel like part of that group is definitely um, an issue. The last thing that I guess is a big challenge facing McMaster uh, Jewish students is residence. Um, because, you know, when you, you go to a residence, you have to pay for a meal plan, um, and, you know, you basically are dependent on the university for the most part for your food. Um, but, you know, I, I couldn't afford to pay for a meal plan, which I wasn't really going to be able to use, and then also pay for my own actual food, which I was going to be able to eat. And, you know, there's also the ability to cook stuff, whatever. Uh, the, the, I guess the main point here is that residence is really, really difficult um, for a kosher person, both in terms of cost and in terms of accessibility. And residence is another central part of, you know, being part of this McMaster community. And when you sort of lose that, I lived off campus in first year. Um, and again, I didn't really have that sense of community. I, I became part of other communities for sure. But it definitely, looking back, I mean, for me, I, I wonder what it would have been like had I been able to be um, part of residence. And I guess there's also issues facing the general community. For example, when Hillel wants to hold a Shabbat dinner, we actually have to pay for the food twice. We have to pay to get the food catered. And we also have to pay a premium that allows us to bring in kosher food because we can't use the normal catering service. So we're paying the, kosher, we're paying the normal catering service to basically allow us to use their facilities, but paying them to not make us food, and then we're paying someone to actually make the food. So that, that's a little bit of a strange issue that we have to deal with, and it definitely restricts our ability to run events on campus as well. Now, I, I've listed a lot of um, issues, and, and I, I, I don't want to make it seem like, you know, that McMaster is, is, you know, a bad place for Jewish students. I think McMaster is an amazing place for Jewish students. I tell everybody, you know, who I see, you know, when I go visit my old high school, that this is a place where, you know, Jewish students can be comfortable, and I'm comfortable. And I've never met a Jewish student here who said they're unhappy here, that they're not comfortable. This is a place where we feel really welcome, really included. And I guess when we look forward, what I would say the goal is, is to try to build up that 
that sort of sense. It's, I happened to come here. It was a coincidence. I would much rather see Jewish students look at McMaster and say, this is a place where I want to be as a Jewish student. Not just I want to be as a student, but a place where I can go and feel like I'm a Jewish student, a comfortable Jewish student. And I mean, it's just, it's all about taking small steps. You know, we had all this work done to have, the, you know, the sandwiches and the danishes brought in. And you might think sandwiches, danishes, like, it's not really a big deal. Like, I mean, you can't live off sandwiches and danishes, three meals a day, seven days a week. And it's true, you can't. Uh, I've tried. It's a student diet. It's, <laughs> it's not fun. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the symbolic gesture alone um, really made a big difference. You know, we had this whole campaign where people were, take, were taking selfies with the sandwiches. And I think there was, like, this huge sense of, like, we're part of the food scene at McMaster. There was this huge amount of excitement. I mean, I remember in first year, if I had to spend a full day on campus and I needed to eat something, my lunch was crackers and hummus, a chocolate bar, and I think peanuts. Like, that was, like, you know, what I could sort of scrounge together from the student center that I could buy to eat. Now that there's a sandwich there, I mean, it, it's such a small step, but it, it's, it's, it, it makes a huge difference. And I think going forward, that really might be the model to follow, taking small steps to sort of build up what we have here to sort of create, you know, maybe, I don't know how long from now, but at some point, definitely something where... You know, you can come and you can be a Jewish, a Jewish student who observes kosher, who can really eat three meals a day, and it's not just having a sandwich and a Danish three times. Um, the last thing I'll say is that I know, and I've, I've, I've heard from Chris, and I've heard about discussions with Chris about how cost is a huge issue. And, and cost, and you know, it, it can't be overlooked. Cost is huge. And another thing that I guess, you know, that a challenge that is faced is demand. I don't know if any of you know, but Bridges actually had kosher options a couple years ago, and there wasn't enough demand, and they had to get rid of um, they had to get rid of these kosher options. What what I guess has to be recognized is this is sort of a problem that sort of feeds itself. If McMaster doesn't have you know kosher options or options for any community for that matter, people from those communities won't come here, and if they don't come here, the demand won't exist. So I don't know if it's necessarily the responsibility of the university, but I would hope the university would be invested going forward into trying to take the first step to, to make you know, campus a food accessible place so that students would come, so that demand would exist. Because the demand is not going to exist before the options are there. It, it, it just won't happen. So it's a long-term investment and it's definitely a huge challenge. And, and I can't imagine, I don't work in the food industry, I can't imagine uh, what challenges exist there. Um, but I do think that it's something which needs to continue to be worked on. Um, and I guess I also do want to say thank you for all the work that is put in all the time. I, we really appreciate it, and you know we're looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, that was really appreciated. Um, and now we have Josh as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've only, I've been in the food industry uh, probably about four or five years now, but I've been in McMaster for two years now as my role as the Indigenous Student Counselor for the Indigenous Studies and the Indigenous um, Student Services Department. And I think it was like the very first PACBIC meeting I ever came to when this topic came up and I said, well, I want to be a part of that just because um, I, I, had, I had heard of issues around like it wasn't a day-to-day -day operational thing like kosher food, it was more of a, around our, our, our feasts and our graduations and more of our gatherings when, when our community would come together and, and having those types of indigenous foods that um, make people feel at home. Um, because a lot of the indigenous students that come here, like you said, are losing a part of their identity just by coming to McMaster, by coming to any university, by coming into this, um, this machine. Um, and a lot of our students do get lost in it. And what we try and do in the Indigenous uh, Services and Studies Department is we try and create that community again while they're here. Um, and one of the biggest things that we try and do is have feasts and community gatherings and um, educational uh, opportunities as well. But we were finding that, and although, like, um, sorry, what was that? Ben. like Ben was saying, there, there has been a lot of great work done. And I think that it has come um, in the last couple of years. I think that it... It has more to, along to do with the discussions that are happening, like or with Chris being so open and, and wanting to work with the different communities. Um, when I first started here, uh, Paradise was bringing in the student group to try and show them how to make uh, a certain type of bread or a certain type of soup or uh, strawberry juice or 
um, something like that. Um, me being from the food industry and me having a really good grandmother that knew how to cook indigenous food, um, I tried some of the, the samples and I wasn't that impressed, to be honest. And um, I voiced that to Chris and, and I said, and I, I think um, the first person said, how do you, you can't train someone that, that, that is a chef to be an indigenous cook. It was someone's grandma that taught them and then someone's grandma who taught them and someone's grandma who taught them how to make these dishes and that's how far it goes back. Um, some of the issues that we had as well after doing partnerships with hospitality services was actually accessing the food. Um, we did an event, uh, a social, and I, I said to Chris, well, we want to have corn soup. Well, what's in corn soup? Well, there's these three ingredients in it. Oh, I, you know, we, I was talking to the chefs of the catering companies, and, you know, we use Cisco and, and, and Gordon Food Services, and I'll find it. Don't worry. If it's out there, I'll find it. And about three weeks came back, and I got an email. We can't find it. I, but it is a very specific product that, that is only manufactured on reserve, like I'm talking about lye corn. So it, it comes from a certain type of corn, it's the process that it goes through, it's, you know, it, it, you can't find it anywhere except for, uh, for on the reserves. So I said, okay, well, what about bringing in a, a, an indigenous caterer that has had 30 years experience, that is a grandma herself, um, and Chris said, let's do it. You know, let's, let's bring her in, let's, she can have the, this part of the, the catering kitchen, um, she can bring in whatever staff she wants um, in regards to this one dish, as long as you know the, the food safety is all on board. Let's let's do it, and we did it. And I, I think that it was a, a learning opportunity for for myself, learning the actual logistics of running a hospitality services in the city of McMaster, um, and just all the gears and parts that goes along with that, and then having to accommodate not a little group, but like a group that wants to have this type of thing. I said, okay, well, let's bring in the caterer. So she came in, um, she's literally like an 80 year old woman that still owns her own catering company on the reserve. Um, I think that was kind of a surprise to the chefs in the kitchen. Um, you know, she came in with her cane and her, and her, uh, and her cooler full of lye corn and, you know, she put it on the counter and she's, and, and she was bossing people around the kitchen. And like, I'm talking like, like the chefs that are here are, are exquisitely trained like they are top-notch chefs in their field um, and there was a little grandma in there saying put this over here put the grab this over here that's that's boiling too much you know and and it was a great experience and I think that like you said those small steps moving forward so again um, now I have that relationship with Chris and we sat down at the table across from each other and said where's the give and take because there is a give and take I understand because I worked in the food industry around food safety around Where's the food coming from? Where's it manufactured? We can't have that here. You know, the liability of food. If it makes someone sick, you know, who's gonna be on the hook for that? Um, is it gonna be Josh Doxleader or is it gonna be McMaster University? You know, all, all those things come into, come into play. And I think that us as indigenous people, indigenous services, I think that we came to the table not to vilify Paradise Catering and how they have the monopoly over food on campus and but to start the conversation, to start having those, you know, those real conversations about food, about how we need that here, how we need that for our community to welcome our students, to make them feel welcome at McMaster. So when they come to a social, they just don't see a tray of wraps and Rice Krispie squares and, and taco dip and, you know, the things that you always see when you go to a catered event at McMaster, they see a pot of corn soup, they see a jug of strawberry juice, you know, there is a, you know, a tray of scone there that looks like their grandma made it. You know, those are the things that are going to make um, our students more uh, comfortable at, at being being here at McMaster. Um, 